Doctor, a very good morning to you. I mean, we've heard a number of times of the different, you know, comorbidities that could contribute to the deaths, you know, COVID-related deaths, that is. How is it that obesity, you know, factors in that? Look, there are a few concerns, right, with any um, infection in the body. And most of the time, a viral infection causes a lot of inflammation or an inflammatory immune response. And so there are concerns just in terms of the coagulability of the blood. So the clotting of the blood um, can often lead to severe consequences for all the organs, including the lungs. And we know that COVID um, predominantly, um, used, you know, when it was emerging, they were talking about it being a respiratory um, illness. And so if your lungs are compromised by inflammation, by infection, um, you then will, um, in, in, in some severe and unfortunate um, circumstances, then have lung complications, respiratory failure, respiratory address, ad arrest, and sometimes then even death because your lungs are just unable to facilitate the oxygenation of blood and the exchanging of deoxygenated blood from your heart and then into the rest of your body. So it is about an immunological response and how some illnesses uh, make that immune response quite severe and then your body is unable to cope with the inflammation. How high a risk is obesity, doctor? How, how much does it leave you at the susceptibility of contracting COVID and even dying from it. Yeah, look, um, it's not the only risk factor, right? We know ab about other comorbidities like um, diabetes, for example, like um, hypertension, the extreme of age, so the very elderly, people who have underlying lung um, conditions. Uh, so it's not just a an only obesity issue, but we have to l l risk do a risk assessment for each individual patient so that we are not giving just generalized information that ends up stigmatizing or unfortunately prejudicing certain individuals. Um, we know that our clinicians, especially in South Africa, have had really successful full um, treatment and management of patients, even with underlying comorbidities. But of course, the concern around um, obesity and being, you know, um, a risk factor for increased mortality is is a continuous um, concern globally and and in South Africa. But we have to look at the patient in totality and do individual risk assessment because some people do survive. Um, so we just have to be cautious, um, you know, in how we we communicate so that we don't end up stigmatizing um, or, or eventually then leading to discrimination of certain people. Doctor, you're saying you and other partners are saying that you know efficient nutrient labels on food will go a long way to helping with this cause of curbing obesity and the deaths of COVID-19 related to obesity. How do you, how would you like to see this happening? So there's a few things involved in the decision that make people um, choose certain foods over others. Sometimes the food labeling is not clear in terms of the ingredients. And we know that some preservatives, some colorants, as well as some flavorants um, actually take food that's actually quite poor in nutrition and, and makes them look like um, they are good food options. And so without good um, labeling that can list all the ingredients in languages that people can understand, it becomes making the choice of whether to buy certain food stuff or not quite difficult. We know that the right to information is a human right, and we know that with good information, people are then enabled to make better choices. We also have to think about the issues of, especially in the developing countries, of how poverty marginalizes people. Um, the, the people don't have access to money to buy what's often is seen seems as luxurious food, but actually when you're looking at the nutrient value, it's actually quite unfortunate and it's an injustice that people who are poor are, are left with poor food options and foodstuffs, uh, foodstuffs to, to then buy or afford versus people who are in an in a upper class in, in societies. And so we know that even the food insecurity problem that COVID is now bringing globally, but also to South Africa, there has to be a much bigger effort on states and governments to make sure that people are not left so destitute that they are actually then not able to have good, nutritious food. Now, I understand that there are people who may not have access to the information, but then there are people like myself, and I'm going to speak for myself here, where I know and I've heard about what goes into McDonald's burgers, for example, and what goes into other unhealthy foods um, that I consume, but I still go out there and, and consume them. I don't read the nutrient labels that are on the foods, even though I know I should. How then do you 
deal with those kinds of people who, you know, are, I suppose go with the approach of ignorance is bliss. I want what I want. I like what I want. And even though it'll kill me, I still want it. You are absolutely correct, and we have to talk about the, the psychology of food, right, and the marketing of food. A lot of this food is promoted as convenient, and so people like yourself, like myself, who are incredibly busy, will then often fall on to these other what are called convenient options. And that's why food labeling is, is important, because you can have convenience and nutrition and responsible um, food choices. So it's not that you for convenience to happen, the food itself has to be subpar of a poor quality. A lot of the food that are deemed convenient are very high in sugar, very high in salt, very high in energy, but you're still missing a lot of micro um, uh, um, micronutrients, right, and minerals. And that's why you will find that even now in the developed world, in the richer countries, you have adults who are actually presenting with malnutrition, who are presenting with chronic mineral deficiencies, and therefore how we think about convenience, how food is marketed, and often to children, incorporating cartoons, incorporating music, incorporating um, a sort of popular culture. We need to be aware of how psychology and the fact that humans naturally want and take and derive pleasure from food. We need to understand how some of those are used against us as consumers. But to your point, you can have convenience, you can have good nutritious food and make informed decisions. Whether you end up taking that um, decision yourself as as, as, as a person, Morena, it's still up to you, but you need to be enabled in terms of legislations, in terms of options, because also if you only have one fast food place in your area and no other alternatives, then are you really making a choice? Thank you. That is please. Dr. Chaleng Mofukeng, who is the special rapporteur to the United Nations Human Rights Council, calling for more efficient nutrient labels on food as to curb obesity because it is seen to be one of the major causes of COVID-19 deaths.